Um, so let's get back to this. Okay, so um, what the the add mode should be doing is you know adding adding the signals together here, um, and so I'm trying to find a good let's see in linear mode um, maybe it'll maybe it's more visible in exponential mode. Um, Let's see. You know, so what should be occurring is that um, um, is that you know when you get another uh, when you get another you know extended signal coming, it's going to be adding the two together. Um, but obviously, we can see that um, when you get another when you get another signal coming here. All right, so they're nearly counted down. So if we look at this um, green signal here, it's counting down, and another one occurs. But of course, the, the first one just gets bumped back up to a value of one, and then begins to decay. So let's see. Uh, um, Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna have to refer to Jeremy on exactly what this guy's doing here. I haven't taken a close look at it, honestly. Um, because that's what I thought, and then you know, because add, you know, should be um, adding the two you know, uh, signals together, you know, you know, if they're decaying, but obviously if you have another signal coming, you know, that comes right afterwards, then, you know, it's going to start back up at one again. Um, so it kind of seems to be a mute point to have this. Um, and then merge, um, right, simply merges the two together. <clears throat> So here we can see, oh, 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 okay, I think I, just a second, guys, while I gather my thoughts on this. Mm, no. As you can see, we're starting to build so much, so much functionality into this that uh, it's uh, working into a challenge to put everything straight. <laughs> uh, hey, Jeremy, I'm going to mute you. So, Jeremy, Jeremy's computer reset on, so he just jumped back in the room. So I'm going to mute you, Jeremy. All right. Okay. Um, all right. So back to here. So right now I have it on. Right now I have it on merge. And let me put this back to yeah linear. Okay. Merge and linear. Um.
Hey, Jeremy, if you can hear me, um, could you jump back in here? I got some questions for you. Um, so you can definitely see the merge uh, has uh, quite a different look to it. So the original, you know, as we can see here, the original signal is uh, a full value signal, and then the decay drops down quite a bit. Um, let's take a look at the value here. So we're off at 1. If we go one bar forward, drops down to 0.475. Um, hmm. Yeah, it looks like it's doing a subtraction there. Let me see if I can get Jeremy on the line here. That way I can get some clarification. Um, All right, let's play with this for a little bit. So let's do the logarithmic with the merge turned on. Yeah. So we can see that the decay is behaving like the logarithmic. Um, but clearly after the after the initial signal comes in, you know, the 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 decay drops dramatically. So, all right, well, fortunately, Jeremy can't join us, so, okay. Um, all right, so the first signal's coming in. Um, we have a value here nearly of 1, <clears throat> and... Then we're drop it down here to just below one. So um, and then we're entering into the logarithmic de decay here. In the merge mode. Hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna have to get some clarification from this on Jer from Jeremy. Uh, let me just put it back to a basic linear with add and let's see. And yeah, the reset is set to 20, so it should be decaying by 0.05 which I can see it is hmm. well yeah we'll have to get back to this plus we'll have the documentation up on the website here soon so uh, all right, so that kind of that basically wraps up the signal extender. It's pretty basic, pretty simple, uh, except for the mode function, obviously. <laughs> so, all right, let's uh, let me move on to the toggle here. And, all right, so give me a moment to kind of set this up. Um, let's see. I think I'm going to use the stochastic inflection. Uh, that's got a lot of signals coming in and well actually there this period here has a lot of signals coming in and um,
Okay, so here, here it is in its <clears throat> simplest state. So let me kind of back this up to here. <clears throat> I think this makes a good, easy uh, representation. So we can see. Uh, let's just look at the let's look at the long sides here. Well, let's see. Maybe I can. Uh, um, where is it? Um, yeah, let me just force this to the long sides only. <clears throat> there. All right. <clears throat> so that. There, so we're only looking at the long sides. <clears throat> Makes it a little easier to, to see. So we can see this um, this long signal comes in, right? So these these are the signals that are coming in to the function node. So this long signal comes in and toggles the function node on. And it stays on, stays on, <clears throat> until the next one comes in, which turns it off. So right now, it's just in a simple on-off uh, toggle mode, or, you know, basically it's just in, in toggle mode. It's just going to toggle on and off right now. And so as we move along, so here's another long inflection coming in. Turns it back on until the next long signal comes in and toggles it back off. So that's kind of the basic simple use of it. And uh, so from there we can um, some other other uses of it. <clears throat> so let's just kind of keep with this toggle here. So you can see there's an on opposite signal. So we could use that uh, in different modes. Right? So we could use it to force it off. And I'm going to have to <clears throat> turn turn that the shorts back on. There we go. <clears throat> I'm going to adjust my display. There we go. Now the shorts aren't so distracting. All right, so uh, let's see. I'll start with this guy here. So we have a long coming in, toggles it on, step forward, and now this opposite signal forces it off. Right, so we're using the opposite signal to um, to uh, perform, you know, various uh, functions on the toggle. Right, so we could use it to force it off, or we could use it to toggle. So now that ought to get really hairy. <clears throat> so now we can see this short toggle the longs on, and then the long toggled it off. So basically, you know, the long and the short, or I should say the shorts and the longs, are both toggling the long on and off. Right, toggle it off. <clears throat> and then back on again. Right, so forth and so forth. So even though this is a a pretty simple function node. You can see it's got it's got a lot of features, a lot of settings here. Um, then of course if we you can use the opposite signal to force it back on. And hmm, let's see. I was hoping to 
kind of come up with a signal, you know, to give us some more diversity where we might get two, you know, two longs in a row. Um, well, let's see. Okay, I could use one of these guys here. Let's um, let's see. What can I use? Um, yeah, let me build something here. So I'm going to move this down. So what I'm going to do is these um, these two um, indicators here. I'm going to join them together with an OR node to create a combined signal and feed that in. Um, let's see. Yeah, we'll, we'll give that a test drive, see how that works out. All right, so let me build it on this, this instance here. Drop down an OR node. And... <clears throat> All right, yeah, we can see there's lots of signals coming in now. Um, hmm. It's almost too many. Uh, let me, let's see. Yeah, I'm going to adjust this real quick. So let's... Uh, Yeah, let me spread this out a little bit. So let's do something like uh, eight. Um, actually, ten and eight. All right, that looks good. Now, just need to make the same change here in Bloodhound. Mm. All right, so I'm just going to take a look, make sure I got everything right. Yeah, so we're getting a long and a short here. <clears throat> here we have a long, so we have a long, and we have a short and a short. We've got two shorts and then another long. Okay, yeah, so good. Good, good, good. All right, I just need to create the same thing over here. And, well, here, actually, let me... Show a little shortcut here. So if you're working with two instances, you know, trying to figure out something complicated, uh, I can just hit, so I'll, right, so I'm just going to save this, and then I can just load it up over here. And there we go. You can see it just made the changes for me, and drop that OR node in. All right. Um, yeah, sometimes, let's see. Yep. Oh. Sometimes when you load up a template, you're going to have to hit F5. So let's do that real quick. There we go. Okay, so now let's take this signal. I'm going to feed that into the toggle node. Mm -hmm. 
so we got toggle and no action. All right. So let's put this, let's see. Um, so put it into opposite. So the opposite signal is going to force it on. So like right here, okay, so right here, this long signal toggled it off. So it was on, the long signal toggled it off. We come along and the short signal, right, is forcing it on. So we can see now that every everywhere we have a short signal, the long side is being forced on. And then the short and then the long side can come along and toggle it back off. All right, so we're on. The long side toggles it back off. Um, so what I'm looking for is an instance where um, where we have the long side, say like toggling it off and then toggling it back on before a, a short signal comes in, but. Um, Doesn't look like I'll have that situation. Maybe let's take a look at the short sides here. Yeah, here we go. So if we look at the short sides, we can see the, the long here, which is the opposite signal for the shorts, right? So it forced it on, and then we have a, a short signal that toggled it off, and then another one that toggled it back on, and then of course we come along, it's already on, so this long signal, you know, forced it on, but it's already on, and then the short signal toggled it back off, come along, the long signal forced it back on, and then it gets toggled back off and then forced back on by the long side. Um, let's take a look. Oh, here we go. <clears throat> Here's another good example. Yeah, great spot. Okay. So the long side forces it on. The short side toggles it off. The long side forces it back on. And then the short side toggles it off. Then we come along, then the short side toggles it back on. And then force off, All right? So now the longs are gonna be forcing, uh, forcing the, the shorts off. <clears throat> Uh, so let's find an example here. <clears throat> All right, so we have the, the short coming in that toggled it on, and then the long forced it off. The long side, or the, the short side toggled it back on, and then the long side forced it off. And then the short side toggled it back on, and another short toggled itself off. All right, let's take a look at some of these others here. Um, all right, so once again, so the signal coming in, um, I guess let's take a look at the force on. Um, <clears throat> All right, so as so you can see that every time we have a long signal coming in, 
right? It's forcing the longs on. <clears throat> and we see here we have a we have a short, but we also have a long at the same time. So we can see that the the longs toggling it on, you know, are overriding the the short toggling it off. But then we finally get a short by itself, so, right? So it's toggling it off. Then we're toggled back on. And then the shorts are toggling it off. All right, so the long sides are always trying to turn the toggle on. And the shorts are always trying to turn it back off. All right, so you can see you can get quite, you know, quite the variety that you need here. Um, Let's take a look at some other combinations, see what happens. Um, all right, so toggle and toggle. Um, right, so this reset. Uh, so, uh, so you can see there's a lot of kind of overlapping functionality here. So that if we, you know, if we're using this opposite signal, you know, essentially we, we can be using this opposite signal to, in a sense, kind of reset the toggle. And then, it, but then of course, you have this reset section here, which can do the same thing. Um, so, you know, there's, there's various ways to accomplish the same thing, um, right, by, uh, by using the, you know, the input section can mimic a lot of the functionality that's in the reset reset section here. So if we set the toggle and toggle with no action on the opposite side, um, we can see that it's simply the longs coming in here are just toggling it on and off. It's back on, back off, back on, off, and then on again, so forth. Um, so I, I, I think I, I think you guys can see the, you know, see the, um, um, the overlapping kind of functionality, um, that you can generate here. Uh, so instead of kind of beating this thing to death, um, I'll just kind of leave it like that um, and get kind of ready to wrap this thing up. Um, and then, of course, you have the output values here. So uh, so this kind of gives you a way to invert your signals. Uh, right? So if I set this to 0, set that to 1, you can see, in a sense, that kind of inverts the signal. With that, you know, I think I'll kind of leave like that and go to some questions here. Let's see, Randy. Let's see. So, Randy, it looks like you're just kind of making a, a request about the video size. So, let's see, Randy. Also, Jeremy, if possible, could you and Zach set your video outputs to match what Zach has been using for 90% of the workshops. Um, let's see. Yeah, Randy, I was running most of my videos in, um, uh, let's see if I can pull up. Uh, 
the screen resolution. You know, I was running most of my workshops here at 1680 by 1050. You know, but I kind of realized in people that I've been doing one-on-one -on -one with, you know, half of you guys have 24-inch monitors, but you know, half of you guys don't. So, and, and also, uh, you know, so I decided that's part of the reason why I decided to lower my resolution down a little bit. But also what I noticed is that YouTube, right, only supports the lower end high definition, right, which is 1280 by 720. So when you take text up here at 1680 and knock it down or, you know, text at 1050 and knock it down to HD of 720, your text gets really small. So, um, you know, so mainly for uh, YouTube, you know, and for some of the guys that aren't, you know, running 23-inch monitors, I also dropped my resolution down to some kind of a medium point, you know, uh, in between what what I see and also hopefully to help make the text a little more readable um, on YouTube because, you know, right, we have to shrink the video down to 720 HD. So I think for now I'm going to just kind of stick with this um, 1400 by 1050 resolution. So, um, so yeah, thanks for that comment there, Randy. Let's see. And yeah, I'll, you know, I haven't discussed this with Jeremy, but I'll pass that on to him. Uh, right. Uh, so Gary's asking, when's the documentation going to be ready? Now, I'm still working on it, Gary. So I've got a lot on my plate, and I'm just slowly chipping away at it. Um, and so I'm just going to, one day it's just going to all just pop up there. So I'd say I'm more than 50% done on it. So I'm getting there. Um, all right. And see the last question by Randy. Um, so isn't that acting more like a reset, uh, whereas a toggle uses a signal to toggle on, and the same signal then toggles it off? Um, shoot, Randy, well, sorry, I didn't see that soon enough. Uh, so hopefully I kind of answered your question. Uh, so... Um, yeah, I mean, depending on what you have here, toggle where it basically acts like a true toggle, uh, creating the opposite effect. So toggle, in a sense, is just um, creating the opposite effect. So if, if it's on, then it's going to change it to off. If the signal coming in is off, then it'll switch it to on um, versus just a one-way like a one-way switch, we're always on or always off. Um, so, all right, good, Randy. So, he says it's all good. All right, well, guys, I'm going to just wrap it up there. And just let this workshop be a simple, clean one for the, toggle, for the function nodes. And so, next week, if you guys have questions... Um, you know, I'd kind of like to get back to answering some questions for you guys. So send in your your questions, and um, and uh, we'll take care of those for the, uh, next week's workshop. Uh, any other kind of questions coming in? All right. And uh, Jeremy said he was in a meeting, so I'm pretty sure he doesn't have any last words. Um, all right, Will. Uh, all right, well, thanks, Randy. You guys have a good rest of your week, too. And um, we'll see you next week.
And well, actually, let me show you guys. Um, so if you want to play with this, uh, if you want to, yeah, play with this, I um, um, this Bloodhound template. Let me pull that up. I did post this Bloodhound template that I have here. So let's. Um, Pull it up. Mm. Uh oh, double eyes. All right, let's see, I put it in the video, oops. I put it in the video, oh, come on, Internet Explorer. All right, I am definitely a fan of Firefox. Um, let's see, here we go, video tutorials. Oh, wait, not the tutorials, sorry the workshops. Go on. All right, let's go to the workshops. And Browser's running really slow. Sorry about that, guys. Um, let's see. Yeah, I believe it is. So the first, uh, yeah, so here's the first function no video I posted up here. And so I put the templates with it. Uh, so there we go. Yep, yeah, the SI training workshop. Uh, oh, sorry. This is the first one. And then... Um, I did rename it. Let's see where to go. Where to go? Oh, there we go. So right up, right above the first function node workshop, right above. Uh, I think essentially these are kind of like the same, same templates, just a different name. So this template here has the workshop name, um, and this one I might have added a little more to. This template here, which actually had, which right, which is called the Function Nodes Playroom, um, which is the one I'm using. So I think I might have added a few extra solvers um, to it, All right? So I think that newer one I think has these function nodes down here, where I was showing the yeah the what the signal counter. So I kind of created a condition here to to count these uh, inflection signals. All right. So, uh, let me cancel that. All right, so this is the most current posting of this of this uh, template file. And, and then the yellow uh, the button is the indicator, right, which is this test signal generator uh, indicator right there would be the yellow button. So, all right. Um, so with that, I'll, I'll, okay, I'll leave it at that, guys. Thank you, and have a good rest of your week. Adios.